Warriors way last night, a much needed win. We all needed that win. It was good for the Saw as they improved to 15 and 16. Get their third win, third road win of the season. First against the Eastern Conference team. Uh, they had lost five in a row on the road, but they get a good win yesterday after shooting 53% from the floor, 46 from three. Actually got to the free throw line. Outshot their opponent at the free throw line for the sixth time all season. Shasky, go figure. And Jordan Poole, of course, with the career high, 43 points. And let's not waste any more time. Let's go to Jim Barnett, who's out there on the East Coast with the Go to State Warriors, of course, color analyst here on 95.7 The Game. We love JB. JB, good morning, man. What a win for the Warriors last night. What a game for Jordan Poole. Career high, 43 points. He hits the five threes. And I loved his pacing yesterday. He wasn't over dribbling. He wasn't going 100 miles an hour. He played like he did last March and April and in the postseason. A good sight for Jordan Poole. I thought so, too. He was very decisive. When he made a move, he went straight to the basket, or he went straight up in the air, took the shot. He wasn't, you know, over dribbling, going in and out, and indecisive like that, and slipping all over the floor. Uh, he had his confidence last night, and uh, he, he's a, a, obviously a big part why they won the game and a career high forty three. Uh, it, it was terrific, and he got to the free throw line. Like he, I thought, it was important that um, they shot free throws last night mm -hmm. because they they've given up. In, in the first 20 games of the season, they'd given up over 200 free throws uh, to the other team. The, the other incredible. team had taken more than 200 free throws than the Warriors, and that's been a real problem. But last night, they got to the line 26 times, and, and they're a good free throw shooting team. Um, you know, they made 22 of the 26. They played a really good game and it's much needed win. Um, I, I thought the bench was good last night. Jermichael Green mm -hmm. uh, was terrific. The rebounding, this, this, they played against a, a bigger team. Uh, they, they were big players all over the place for Toronto, but the Warriors stayed with them rebounding. They, were, they had 42 to 43 for Toronto. Uh, I, I don't like the turnovers. They, they did great in the first half, but turned the ball over in the second half. But overall, the way they shot the ball, the way they, the first quarter, they made eight threes. Draymond, who'd made 11 threes all year long, <laughs> hit, hit three threes in the first quarter. It was terrific. First 90 and, seconds, uh, JB. <laughs> first 90 seconds of the game, he hit three threes. <laughs> <laughs> and, but last night, their defense held strong all the way through, all the way through. And uh, Toronto only shot 42%. Uh, I thought it was a real key to uh, not let them get in the lane. They did get in the lane for a lot of points, but the Warriors also got into the lane. Uh, points in the paint was good, really good last night. They were aggressive, and I love the tempo. Draymond was was a great leader last night. He re bringing that ball down the floor, pushing it like they were, um, and I think I think they caught Toronto off guard. And uh, they they really, I mean, when you start that game and and you score thirty six points in the first quarter, then you get thirty two, and you got a nice halftime lead. You get come back in the third quarter with thirty four. Um, they were on their game. So it was a good win for them. Uh, it's, a, it's a step forward. Now they've got the Knicks tomorrow night. The Knicks, a hot team. I think they've won seven in a row. Uh, we'll, we'll see how they play against them. But I liked it that they finally adjusted without Stephen Curry, uh, who you know obviously got hurt in that Indiana game. So uh, I thought they played pretty well against Philadelphia. I think they were ahead at halftime of the Philly game. They then lost it. But uh, you know this is uh, they they got a lot of players that don't have a lot of experience like. Ty Jerome, and I thought I think he's a pretty doggone good basketball player. Um, you know, they're bringing these guys off the bench, and last night the bench had 33 points. Uh, JB, I feel like uh, Dante DiVincenzo has just been spectacular for this team. He's doing so many little things, 50-50 balls, setting up the offense, you know, grabbing a rebound when they desperately need to to clear a defensive rebound and stop a possession. Um, he's been much, much better the last couple of weeks. What are you your thoughts on Dante DiVincenzo? Chasky, I'm, I'm glad you brought him up. Uh, he's so solid. And, you know, he, he's not worried about, you know, getting his, his, his points. He plays 33 minutes last night, and he takes five shots because everything else was going for other people. He's unselfish, and he's always around the ball. He keeps the ball alive. He makes steals. He gets rebounds. Um, the two previous games against Philly and Indiana, uh, he, you know, he has 17 points in that Philadelphia game where he hit his first five threes coming out of the gate. He was really hot. He's an excellent basketball player. He's got size. He can defend, and he can rebound. 
He, he knows how to play the game. He's got a very high basketball IQ, and I like him. Uh, I think he kind of, you know, the first few weeks of the season was trying to meld in and, and not do too much. But now he's more assertive, and he's good on the floor. And I think he's got a really – when he's out there, he, the defense is better. And I think the plus minus is a lot better when he's on the floor. Mm-hmm. JB, um, I've noticed it, just my naked eye, especially recently, it feels like when Draymond, Dante are on the floor with Jordan Poole, you get the best version of Jordan Poole because there's so many playmakers out on the court in the half court. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, as I said, DiVincenzo is a very unselfish basketball player. High IQ. He knows how to play the game at both ends of the floor. Uh, he, he moves the ball. The ball never stops there. Uh, and and, and we would mentioned about pool and over dribbling and so forth. The ball will always stop. And he might take, I don't know, 15, 20 dribbles before he does something else and maybe give the ball up and waste all that time. He didn't do that last night. So I thought they played a really good uh, team game. Uh, I, I think they're getting used to each other. And you know what? We haven't mentioned Kevon Looney. I was just Kevon about Looney. to, JB. Second straight double double. How about that? He's just been terrific. <laughs> uh, and and the game before, uh, he almost had a triple double. Yeah, one assist shy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I really like the way he's playing. He's really solid. He's playing consistently. He's getting better all the time. He's strong. He's rebounding. He's defending without fouling. And uh, he's having his best year. There's no question about it. Nah, I love what Looney's doing. He's played in his 142nd consecutive regular season game. And this is a guy who had hip surgeries. He didn't know if he could be durable. Well, he's he's a stalwart in that lineup. He's he's a godsend for to go to State Warriors at the five spot there. Look, I, I want to get to Kaminga in a second. I know a lot of people were kind of up in arms about him only playing five minutes last night. But I think overall over the last 12 to 13 games, he's averaging over 20 minutes a game. And you can see him turning the corner. It just feels like with every possession, every rep, Jonathan Kaminga is starting to figure it out. What have you seen? seen in JK over the last couple weeks here, JB? Well, I think he's letting the game come to him. He's not trying to go in and t- he's not taking the ball to trouble like he was before and and missing the shots and turning the ball over. Um, you know, that's why you'll see him outside a little bit more. And not that I want him shooting three pointers all the time, but you know, I, I like him because he's concentrating on defense, trying to rebound the ball, trying to play a team game. And not, you know, I, I think he was a little um, earlier in the season thought he could come in and, and play like he did, you know, in the in the, <laughs> in the G League and and just overpower people. This is the NBA. These guys know how to play. They've got experience, the opponents. And you can't, they know how to play. And they're just as big. They jump and have, they're athletic. So he's now he's kind of tamed himself down a little bit and not trying to, come in, take over the game, which actually gets himself in trouble. Uh, so he's letting the game come to him. I thought he's been really good the last five games. Now, he didn't get many minutes last night, I don't think. Um, no, he didn't at all. Yeah, you only played five minutes. Yeah, all of the first half, yeah, JP. Yeah, yeah. but, but I th- because I think Steve Kerr realized who was playing really well last mm-hmm. night, and he wanted the guys out there that could win the game for him. Um, that's why Moses Moody didn't play that much. But Moses Moody played, what, 10, 11 minutes? And uh, didn't even take a shot. So, um, but he's still effective out there, and I, I like him. He knows how to to play the game. He's smart, yeah. Yeah. and uh, so I, I, you know, without Curry, without Wiggins, and, and they win this game, and they've been in these other games as well, except for the, on the road trip, except for the first one against Milwaukee. Um, I, I think they're doing okay, and they're getting now they're learning to play without Steph and Curry a little bit. So I, yeah. I'm encouraged by all of that. Uh, JB, a quick aside, it's Christmas. I want to know, of all the people that you've played with, worked with, been around, who are the best and worst gift givers? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, don't, I, don't know of, uh, I don't know the inside stuff of what, what's going on. I know this is Stephen Curry gives a lot away to a lot of people oh. and does things. But, uh, you know, I don't exchange gifts with players. I, I do with Tim Roy. Oh, nice. Bob Fitzgerald. Is Tim and, a good uh, gift Bob Fitzgerald, getter? Bob Fitzgerald's, a very, Bob Fitzgerald's a very good gift Oh, Bob giver. is. Oh. Yes, he is. Oh. And, and you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, Tim Roy always brings nice, nice 
delicacies that uh, he bakes himself. His wife doesn't bake. He bakes. Oh, wow. wow. I didn't know Tim Roy had that skill set. Wow. Yeah, and divinity uh, and, and it got lots of different little things, special things. And so he brings some nice treats for the for the food. And he does that every Christmas, by the way. Oh, wow. Nice. wow. About that. Make sure, make sure that I'm on the list at the end of this year. Yeah, I need to, <laughs> we need to try to get on that list, Shasky. We need to get Tim Roy. Uh, yeah. We need to get on Tim Roy's good side here. Uh, JP, how's the East Coast Street deal before we get you off? You enjoy the East Coast road trips? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's been so long, it's hard to remember, but you know, we go to Philadelphia. Well, that was my last team that I, I played with, uh, and losing in the finals to uh, Portland with Dr. J and George McGinnis and Doug Collins. And, of course, coming here to New York, I played for the Knicks for uh, two and a half seasons, and I always love coming to New York. I know where to go, and it's uh, a lot of fun. And so, no, I, I like being on the road, and but it's, it's very different. We, when we used to stay in motels early in my career and, and have roommates and everything, and now we stay you know, in beautiful hotels. Uh, four seasons and places like that, and it's uh, pretty luxurious. And they feed you. We always had to go out, and, you know, the first year in the league with the Celtics, I had to go out and find meals every day on $8 a day meal money. And that's tough to do even even back in 1966, 67. That was tough to do in New York. Wow. Is New York the best city in terms of Christmas? Like if you just touch down for Christmas week, you think New York's the best city? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm yeah, kind of with lots, you. Lots of lights. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, trees here and there yes snow it, yeah. you know it, it's uh it's fun in new york city and then it's going to be a fun two-game stretch a mix of one seven seven in a row madison square garden that's always electric and then of course kevin durant and kyrie Irving and the brooklyn nets who've won nine of their last ten they're hot they're on fire so nice little two-game stretch here to end the road trip jb always fun catching Merry up Christmas. with you and a good win and happy holidays to you and your family jb i appreciate it very much and thanks for having me on today anytime jim barnett the legend the great